السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ Dr. Zakir Naik uh, is probably, probably the most dangerous man in the world today to Christianity because he brings hundreds of thousands of people to Islam, many of them from Hinduism and also from Christianity. He brings them through just by these kind of videos that we're doing right now. Now, this man is dangerous. This man is enormously popular. He knows Urdu. He knows Hebrew. He knows Greek. He knows English. He knows Arabic. He, can, he has memorized much of our Bible by heart. He uses no notes. What will we do? Tonight, we will use the yardstick of the atheists, that is science and technology, and compare with our yardstick, that is the glorious Quran. The first question I'll ask to the atheist is that if there is an object or an equipment who no one in the world has ever seen before, who no one knows about it, and if that object is bought in front of you and if the question is asked to that atheist that who is the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this equipment this object who no one in the world has seen before can you guess what answer that atheist will give you i will repeat the question that if you ask an atheist that if an object or an equipment is bought in front of him, who no one in the world has seen before, no one knows about it. And if that object is bought in front of him, and the question is asked, that who will be the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this equipment object, what will his reply be? What will his reply be? Creator? Someone will say manufacturer, someone will say inventor, someone will say producer, whatever the answer is similar. The first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of an equipment or an object to no one in the world knows about it or has seen before, it is the creator or it is the manufacturer, it is the producer, it is the inventor. Don't grapple with the words, it will be somewhat similar. Just keep the answer at the back of your mind. I will ask the question to the atheist that how did this universe come into existence? So the atheist will tell me that our universe initially was one primary nebula. Then there was a big bang. There was a secondary separation which gave rise to galaxies, which gave rise to stars, which gave rise to planets, the sun and the earth on which we live. And when we ask this atheist that when did you come to know about this? So he will tell us that we came to know in the 1970s when a group of scientists, they got the Nobel Prize for describing the creation of the universe. So I will ask the atheist what you came to know hardly about 45, 46 years back is already mentioned in my Quran 1400 years ago and it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Ambiya chapter number 21 verse number 30 Avalam yaral lazina kafuru do not the unbelievers see anna samawati wal adha kan zarat kan fataqna huma that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder this what you're talking about the big bang which you came to know hardly 40 45 years back is already mentioned in my Quran 1400 years ago who could have mentioned that in the Quran so the atheist will tell it's a fluke don't argue possible don't argue with that. I'll ask him the next question that what is the shape of this earth so he will tell me that previously we thought that the word that the earth is flat now we have come to know that the earth is spherical and when I ask him the question when did you come to know the earth is spherical he will tell me it was in 1579 when Sir Francis Drake sailed around the earth that he proved that the earth is spherical <coughs> so I will tell him that what you have come to know in 1579 hardly about 450 years back is already mentioned in my Quran 1400 years ago. The Quran says in Surah Luqman, 
chapter number 31 verse number 29 alam tara anna allaha yuliju layli fin nahar yuliju nahara fil layli it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who merges the night unto the day and merges the day unto the night this merging is a gradual and slow process the night gradually and slowly changes into the day and the day gradually and slowly changes into the night this phenomena is only possible if the earth is spherical it's not possible if it is flat i would request the light technician that if they can keep the lights open in the audience that will be better i request yes keep it on this is not a rock show yes at least there should be interaction i would like to have a look at the audience so i can have the feeling jazakallah shukran allah it is mentioned in the quran in surah zumur chapter number 39 verse number 5 that the night overlaps and coils over the day and the day overlaps and coils unto the night the arabic word used is qawara how you coil a turban over the head now this coiling of the night unto the day and the day unto the night is only possible if the earth was spherical it would not have been possible if it was flat otherwise there have been a sudden change it's further mentioned in the quran in surah naziyat chapter number 79 verse number 30 wal ard ba'd zalika dahaha and thereafter we have made the earth x shaped the arabic word dahaha one of its meaning is an expanse and the earth is an expanse the other meaning is derived from the arabic word duya which means an egg and we know today that the earth is not completely round like a ball it is flattened from the pole it is your spherical in shape and the arabic word duya doesn't refer to a normal egg it specifically refers to the egg of an ostrich and if you have a look at the shape of an egg of an ostrich that too is your spherical in shape like flattened from the poles and the arabic word duya means where the ostrich lays the egg imagine the quran 1400 years ago exactly specifies the shape of the earth as being geospherical who could have mentioned this in the quran so the atheist may say maybe your prophet muhammad peace be upon him was an intelligent man don't argue continue i'll ask him the next question that the light of the moon is it its own light or reflected light so the atheist will tell me that previously we thought the light of the moon was its own light recently we have come to know that the light of the moon is reflected light quran mentioned 1400 years ago in surah furqan chapter number 25 verse number 61 blessed is he who has made the constellation and placed therein sun having its own light and moon having borrowed light the arabic word for sun used in the quran is shams and its light is always described as siraj wahaj or diya meaning torch blazing lamp or shining glory all of these three mean the light of the sun is its own light the arabic word used for the moon is qamar and its light is always described as nur or munir meaning a reflection of light or borrowed light imagine the quran mentioned 1400 years ago that the light of the moon is not its own light but it is a reflected light or borrowed light and this message is further repeated in surah yunus chapter number 10 verse number 5 as well as in surah nu chapter number 71 verse number 15 and 16 that the light of the moon is a borrowed light or a reflection of light who could have mentioned this in the quran 1400 years ago and maybe they thought after a pause may say maybe your prophet peace be upon him was really intelligent man don't argue i'll ask the next question when i was in school i passed my school in 1982 when i was in school i learned in school that the sun though it revolved it did not rotate about its own axis they thought you say is that what is mentioned in the quran i said no no this is what i learned in school about 35 years back when i was in school i had learned that the sun revolved but did not rotate about its own axis but it mentioned in the quran in surah anbiya chapter number 21 verse number 33 
huwallazi khalaqa al-layl wa an-nahar it's allah who has created the night and the day wa shams wa al-qamar the sun and the moon kullun fi falqi yasbahun each one traveling in the orbit with its own motion the arabic word yasbahun is derived from the arabic word sabaha which means a motion of a moving body if i use this word sabaha for a person on the floor it will not mean he is rolling it will mean he is walking or running if i use it for a person in water it will not mean he is floating it will mean he is swimming similarly when the quran mentions it for a celestial body in the sky in the heaven it doesn't mean it is flying it means it is rotating about its own axis so quran says that the sun and the moon besides revolving also rotate about its own axis and today after science has advanced we can have the image of the sun on a table top and we find that the sun has got black spots and it takes approximately 25 days for these black spots to complete one rotation indicating that the sun takes approximately 25 days to complete one rotation and today alhamdulillah all the schools have incorporated this in the textbook when i was in school i was told that the sun does not rotate today all the school textbooks mention that the sun rotates imagine what we came to know recently 30 years back 40 years back 50 years back the quran mentioned 1400 years ago that the sun besides revolving also rotates about its own axis who could have mentioned this in the quran and the atheists will give a long pause don't wait for the reply you can continue the quran says in the quran says in surah yasin chapter number 36 verse number 38 وشمس تجري المستقر لها the sun is running its course for a period determined for a term determined the arabic word mustaqar meaning a place determined it also means a period determined today science tells us that the sunlight we have is due to a chemical reaction taking place since millions of years and one day this chemical reaction will cease will stop and the sun will cease to exist but they say that will take another few million years and today science tells us that the sun along with the solar system is moving in a point in the universe known as solar apex in the point in the hercules is known as alpha lyra and it's moving at a speed of 12 miles per second that's what the quran says that the sun is running its course for a period determined to a place determined today today science tells us that the atmosphere we have above the earth the sky as we call in layman's terminology it acts as a protected ceiling it prevents <coughs> it prevents the harmful rays the x rays the ultraviolet rays from entering the surface of the earth without which life would have ceased to exist on the face of the earth this atmosphere outside the earth which we call a sky it acts as a protected ceiling it filters the harmful radiation from reaching the surface of the earth which is very important for life to exist on the face of the earth The Quran says in Quran says clearly in Surah Anbiya chapter number 21 verse number 32 that we have made the sky as a protected ceiling the Quran refers to the atmosphere outside the earth the sky as a protected ceiling which science has confirmed today when i was in school i had learned that there are three states of matter solid liquid and gas and when i was in school we thought that the space outside the organized astronomical astronomical system is vacuum 
Today, after science advanced, we have come to know that there are bridges of matters outside the organized astronomical systems, which we call today as plasma. And today, science says this is the fourth state of matter. The Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 59, it is he who has made the heavens and the earth and has made everything in between. That means the Quran says that in between there is no vacuum. There is something God has created. Today, science calls it as plasma, as the fourth state of matter. Furthermore, one of the greatest discoveries made in the subject of astronomy today is that the universe is expanding, made by a very famous scientist, Edwin Hubble, that the universe is expanding, it is receding from one another. And Quran says in Surah Dariyat, chapter number 51, verse number 47, that we have created the vastness of space, the expanding universe. The Arabic word used is Muqsiuna, the expanding universe. Imagine, the Quran mentions 1400 years ago that our universe is expanding, which we came to know hardly 100 years back. There may be certain skeptics who will say, it is nothing great that the Quran speaks about astronomy since the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy. I do agree with them that the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy. But I'd like to remind them, it was centuries after the Quran was revealed that the Arabs became advanced in the field of astronomy and not the vice versa. So it is from the Quran that the Arabs learned about astronomy and not the vice versa. In the field of physics, there is a very famous theory known as theory of atomism which was propounded 23 centuries ago by the people called a Democrats. And they said that the smallest part of matter is an atom and the atom cannot be divided. And in Arabic, we call this as Zarra, atom, which is the smallest part of matter, which cannot be divided, is called as Zarra. And it's also mentioned in the Quran. The Arabic word Zarra is also mentioned in the Quran. But today, after science has advanced, we have come to know that though atom is the smallest part of matter, having the characteristic of the element, that too can be divided into protons and neutrons. And the Quran speaks about Zarra. So someone will think that if the Quran speaks about Zarra, about atom, that means the Quran is outdated. Let us analyze what does the Quran speak about Zarra. It's mentioned in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 61, that when you tell to the unbelievers that the last day would come, they will say it will never come. Tell them it will surely come with the permission of thy Lord, in whose record is perpetuous things as small as the atom and things greater and smaller than the atom. That means the Quran is not outdated, the Quran is updated. That the Quran says that every minutest detail as small as the atom is mentioned in the record perpetuous and things smaller and greater than the atom is also mentioned. That means the Quran tells there are things smaller and greater than the atom. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran 1400 years ago? In the field of hydrology, when I was in school and we all learned in school about the water cycle. The water cycle that we learned in the school, it says that the water evaporates from the ocean, it forms into clouds, the cloud move in the interior, they join and the water falls from the clouds and the water table is replenished. This water cycle was first described by Sir Bernard Palissy in the year 1580. Previously, even in 7th century BC, 
tales of Miletus. He said, it was the spray of the ocean which was picked up by the winds which fell into the interior as rain. People did not know from where did the underground water come. They thought it was the pressure of the wind on the ocean which thrust the water into the interior. And they thought that there was a secret passage which at the time of Plato they called it as the Tartarus through which the water flowed back. People believed till as late as 17th century, even Descartes believed in it. And Aristotle, he believed in 19th century that the underground water came from the mountain caverns which fed water to it. Today we know that the underground water that we have is due to the seepage of the rain water in cracks in the ground. It's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Zumar, chapter number 39. Verse number 21. See as thou not, it is he who sends down water from the sky and leads it in grounds, in cracks, and causes sown fields of varying colors to grow. The Quran says in Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 24. It is he who sends on water from the sky and then gives life to the earth after it is dead. The Quran says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 18, that it is we who send down water from the sky and we are able to store it, we are even able to drain it. The Quran says in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 22, that we cause fecundating winds. The Arabic word is lawaki, coming from the word lakaha, meaning to fecundate. And today science tells us that the water that comes from the sky is due to various reasons. One of them is when pollen grains are picked up by the wind and they fecundate the clouds, you find water emerging. The second reason is when the clouds join together, they form into a heap and the water falls down from the sky. The Quran says in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 43, that the clouds move slowly and gently, then they join together and water emerges from the sky. The Quran says in Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 48, that the, the water evaporates, forms into clouds, the clouds move in the interior, and they fall down as rain. The Quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail in several places. In Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 57. In Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 17. In, it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, Verse number 48 and 49, it's mentioned in the Quran, it's clearly mentioned in Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 9, it's mentioned in Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 34, it's mentioned in Surah Jasha, chapter number 45, verse number 5, in Surah Qaf, chapter number 50, verse number 8 and 9, it's mentioned in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 30, in Surah Waqiyah, chapter number 56, verse number 67 to 68, it's mentioned in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 11. I can go on giving only references in the glorious Quran, which talks about the water cycle in great detail. Who could have mentioned about the water cycle in so much great detail which we came to know hardly 500 years back. In the field of geology, today the geologists they tell us that the earth on which we live, the deeper layers, they are hot and fluid and they cannot sustain life. The superficial layer is a thin crust on which we live. And the crust is very thin, hardly 1 to 10 to 30 miles in thickness. And there are high chances that this superficial crust will shake. The radius of the earth is about 3950 miles. And the superficial layer is very thin, hardly 1 to 30 miles in thickness. There are high possibility that the superficial crust will shake. It is due to the folding phenomena which gives rise to mountain ranges, which prevents the earth from shaking. So today the geologists they tell us, it is the mountain ranges which prevent the earth from shaking. The Quran says in Surah Naba, chapter number 78, verse number 6 and 7, that 
we have made the earth as an expanse wal jibal autada and the mountains as stakes the arabic word autad it means stakes it means tent pegs like when we put a tent peg into the ground the portion that we see above the ground is a very small portion the major portion of the tent peg is deep underground so the quran says that we have made on the earth mountain standing firm as tent pegs and the quran repeats this message in surah ghashiyah chapter number 88 verse number 19 and surah naziyat chapter number 79 verse number 32 that we have placed on the earth mountain standing firm there is a book by the name of the earth which is referred in most of the universities while teaching the subject of geology one of its authors is dr frank press who was previously the president of the academy of sciences in usa and was also the scientific advisor to the previous ex-president of usa that jimmy carter and he draws in this book the earth mountains and it shows that the mountains have got roots it are wedges and the roots go deep underground and the mountain above the ground is a very small portion like the tip of an iceberg the iceberg that is there below water is the major portion what you see above the water is a small portion and dr frank press says it is due to the mountains that gives stability to the earth if the mountain weren't there then the earth would have shaken quran says exactly the same in surah ambiya chapter number 21 verse number 31 in surah luqman chapter number 31 verse number 15 and surah nahal chapter number 16 verse number 5 that we have placed on the earth mountain standing firm lest it would shake with you imagine the quran mentions the exact function of the mountain as to prevent the earth from shaking which we have come to know recently who could have mentioned this in the quran in the field of oceanology the quran says in surah furqan chapter number 25 verse number 53 that it is he who has let free two bodies of flowing water one sweet and palatable and the other salty and bitter though they meet they do not mix there is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed previously the commentators of the quran they could not understand what does the quran mean by saying that they knew that there were two types of water sweet and salty but they could not understand what the quran means by saying they meet but they do not mix today we have come to know that whenever one type of water flows into the other type of water it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows this homogenizing area the quran refers to as barzakh unseen barrier imagine what science has discovered recently the quran mentioned 1400 years ago that whenever the sweet water falls it flows into the salt water it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows and we can see this in several places in the world you can see in the southernmost tip of south africa when you go to cape town you can see this phenomena you can see this phenomena in egypt when river nile flows into the mediterranean sea and the best example is the gulf stream it starts in the gulf of mexico then goes northwards towards the east coast of usa then it moves eastwards towards the west coast of Europe. It flows for thousands of miles. And if you're going in a boat and you pick up water from one side of the Gulf Stream and the water from the other side, you will find that one is sweet and the other is salty. Even the temperature between the two waters differ. Imagine, Quran speaks about this phenomena 1400 years ago, which we came to know recently. In the subject of oceanology, there is a verse in the Quran, in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 40, which says, As to the state of the unbeliever, 
as to those who reject our sign, the unbelievers, their state is like the depths of darkness in a vast deep sea. Waves topped with waves topped with dark clouds. When a man stretches out his hand, he cannot see. For to him, for to whom God gives no light, light does not reach. This verse of the Quran along with the translation was taken to Prophet Durga Rao who was, who was a professor in marine geology in Jeddah in the University of King Abdul Aziz. And when he was asked to comment on this verse, he said that this verse does not speak about a normal sea. It speaks about a vast deep sea. And previously, we human beings, we did not know that the depth of the ocean was dark because a human being could not dive more than 20 to 30 meters. He could not survive. After the submarines were invented in 1900, that we have come to know that the depths of the ocean are dark. And Professor Durga Rao said that the darkness in the wild deep ocean is because of various phenomena. Number one, when light enters the water, it gets absorbed in layers. And we learned in school that the light has got seven colors. Vip pure, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. So when the light enters the sea or the ocean, the first 10 to 15 meters of the light, it absorbs the red color. So if a person goes underwater, more than 25 to 30 meters, and if he starts to bleed, he will not be able to see the red color of his blood. Because red color does not reach that portion. And I remember, a few years back, I had gone to Mauritius. And I had the opportunity of going into a submarine, deep underwater. So when I remembered this, I took a chocolate paper of Kit Kat, red color. And as the submarine kept on going down, the red color disappeared. The moment I owned my mobile and I gave external light, I could see the red color. That means the red color is absorbed by the first 15 to 20 meters. Later on, from 30 to 50 meters, the orange color is absorbed. From 50 to 100 meters, the yellow color is absorbed. Yellow color is absorbed. From 100 to 200 meters, the green color is absorbed. And beyond 200 meters, the blue color is absorbed. And above that, it's violet and indigo. So the light is absorbed in successive layers. That's how you find layers of darkness, as the Quran says. Layers of darkness, one on top of the other. Waves topped with waves. What does the Quran mean by saying waves topped with waves? Today science has advanced and we have come to know that the waves that we see on the superficial part of the ocean or the sea is what we see with the eyes. It is called as superficial waves. But when you go underwater, even underwater, there are internal waves. This internal waves, it divides the ocean into two parts. The superficial part and the deep part. The superficial part is warm and lit up. The deep part is dark and cold. The Quran says, waves topped with waves topped with dark clouds. When the sunlight is given from the sun, many a times it is absorbed by the clouds. That which is not absorbed by the clouds, it hits the ocean. Some of it is reflected. The balance goes in the ocean. It is absorbed in successive layers. So the Quran says the state of the unbeliever is like the depths of darkness in a vast deep sea. Waves topped with waves topped with dark clouds. For to who he gives no light, light does not reach him. If a man stretches out his hand, he cannot see. For to whom he gives no light, light does not reach. <coughs> so Prophet Durga Rao said, this information in the Quran cannot be given by 
a human being because we came to know about this recently and the Quran is 1400 years ago. السلام علیکم دوستو امید کرتا ہوں کہ یہ ویڈیو بھی آپ لوگ کو پسند آئی ہوگی دوستو اگر اس بیان کا آپ لوگوں نے تیسرا و آخری حصہ دیکھنا چاہتے ہیں تو ہمیں ضرور کمنٹ میں بتائیں دوستو اس ویڈیو میں ڈاکٹر ذاکر نائک نے وہ سائنسی حقائق جو سائنسدانوں کو اب پتہ چل رہے ہیں جو کہ قرآن مجید نے چودہ سو سال پہلے بیان کیے ہیں وہ ڈاکٹر صاحب نے بہت خوبصورت طریقے سے اس پر روشنی ڈالی ہے دوستو اگر اس ویڈیو کی کوئی بھی پوائنٹ اگر آپ کو اچھا لگا ہو تو ہمیں ضرور کمنٹ میں بتائیں اور اس ویڈیو کو ثواب کی نیت سے زیادہ سے زیادہ شیئر کریں والسلام